From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of hot chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rick Altizer Show. Stop applauding, people. All right, there we go. That's much better. My name is Paul Aldrich, and I am your host for this particular episode. And my guest, surprisingly, is Rick Altizer. Oh, more applause. Hey, Rick, how you doing? Hey, all right. (laughs) I think that's my mom clapping over there. That's the the one hand clapping. (laughs) Well, thanks for coming into your studio today. Thanks, Paul, for having me on my show. <laughs> oh, it is my pleasure. <laughs> Paul has been on the show oh, more than just about anybody. Uh, you can check out uh, rickaltizer.com and, uh, or my podcast and listen to all the stuff I've talked with Paul about with his comedy. Amazing comedian, and Paul's talking to me today. Thanks, Paul. What are we talking about today? Well, you are not just a musician that I knew way back in the day in L.A. when we were kind of hanging out. In those rock star days, you went from rock star to filmmaker extraordinaire. You've done a lot of documentaries, and you have a new documentary that you just finished, so tell us all about it. Patterns of Evidence, The Journey Home. So uh, Patterns of Evidence, for those who don't know, is a series of films uh, made by a filmmaker by the name of Tim Mahoney, and uh, he's got four Patterns of Evidence films out, and two more are coming this coming year. Wow. And... uh, uh, so he'll do, oh, for instance, he'll look at the Exodus. You know, did the Exodus happen? Uh, did Moses write the Old Testament? Did they cross the Red Sea? You know, where was the Red Sea? So he has these really in-depth looks at what does the archaeology say? What's the evidence for it? And he has people on there as well who say, well, you know, I don't believe it happened. And hmm. then people, who, you know, and here's the evidence for why we believe it did happen. And so it's a really great uh, look, in-depth look at kind of an apologetic look it's the old testament and so uh he that's what he had done and right. so he said rick uh can you make a movie for me uh oh something that uh, is just kind of like a making of how we made made patterns of evidence i said well okay <laughs> <laughs> at that time i'd finished show me the father for the kendrick brothers and i was unemployed so you know somebody offering me you know that's the thing about it. when you finish a movie you're unemployed <laughs> yes, indeed. So the phone rang. <laughs> I got a phone call. And uh, so I said, sure. And so uh, I spent six months wow. from start, start to finish and went and interviewed him and interviewed his wife. And uh, this story unfolded. It's interesting because I had done Show Me the Father before this, but this fatherhood story mm. unfolded in Tim's life. His dad threatened to kill the entire family. Wow. No, this and is when he was young. When he was young, and they had to flee. They had to flee and go on the run wow. from his dad, um, who, when his dad came home and found out they were gone, took an axe and started chopping down the house. <laughs> and, you know, the, the police got him, and, you know, he was actually a police officer. Oh, wow. And the police got him and, you know, took him, and he went, you know. So it was a mess. And so he grew up uh, on welfare and struggling, and so this this through line story of uh, him looking for a home, being left from his home, having Mm. to flee his home. And he spent 20 years working on the Exodus, telling the Exodus story. He's still doing it. He's still telling the Exodus story. The next one is Journey to Mount Sinai. Hmm. You know, where is Mount Sinai? Where is it located? And that's coming out in October. And um, so anyway, the film, we did this film and, and we started doing this. And all of a sudden this story came through and so this whole movie came about, turned into this whole other thing of Tim's life mirrors why he's spending 20 years on this exodus, but his story is very much like the exodus. Interesting. Having to flee, having to leave a, a, a situation and leave, and, and they're looking for a home. They're trying to find a home, right? They're leaving Egypt, trying to find a place that they can live. And this has been Tim's story, and Tim's often wondered, why have I spent so many years on this topic Mm. on this story but it very much models and patterns his own story and so we kind of explored that in this film so this film what was going to be kind of a behind the scenes making of which to be honest you know i mean i I wasn't a hundred percent crazy about just doing something like that right especially with a movie that people 
everybody isn't familiar with this. It's not like the, right. the making of Gone with the Wind. Oh, okay, I want right. to speak behind those scenes. So you also have to explain what the movie is that you're exploring behind. And aware, know? like people like yourself, who, who, did, who weren't familiar with the movie. Right. You know, how, how can I make something for people who maybe don't know who this is? So right. trying, to, trying, to, trying to find a universal story that anyone can relate to. That we're this search for home. You know, mm. We want to find this place. This and, and at the end, it's it's heaven. You know, we long for heaven. That's that's our home. So anyway, that was kind of the 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 how it came about. And gosh, uh, so there you go. Yeah, well, so <laughs> so different from from some of your uh, other story. Well, you know, there's some things in common, but uh, this way. And uh, well, I'll say, you know, like one of the films you made for Shonda Pierce, the story was sort of discovered as it went on. All of a sudden, you start out with one way or whatever, but it's like, what's the thread? And all of a sudden, ah, you get it, and now you're asking questions to draw that out, to, and then you're piecing things together because uh, you're really doing several things at once. One is that behind-the-scenes look, interviewing people that are part of the thing because folks that do know these movies, oh, that's the guy that's responsible for the cinematography or the archaeology expert that that mm-hmm, comes in mm-hmm. so there's you're meeting these people but then underneath it you're putting that all on this bed of a story of a man's life and how it, in a sense he's almost compelled to search yeah wow. yes i mean I, I i was uh you know thankful and grateful i, I went up to minnesota uh where he lives and did these interviews and just kind of <clears throat> said you know tim your life is kind of modeling pattern 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 pattering patterning patterning ning <laughs> you're a writer as well i can see <laughs> <laughs> your life has patterns <laughs> well said <laughs> i haven't had enough coffee this morning it's early in the morning my and mouth, we're not editing any of that my, out no nope, man that's, nope. that's my there mouth forever. is not in my mouth is not connected <laughs> to my brain yet <laughs> but his life shows this pattern of this same same thing. It's just such a connection, and I and I told him about that that he has this um, cabin that he's working on that he's spending all this time on. Mm. He's going to have the whole family stay there, and every and I said this is like this farm. He went, but when he grew up, uh, his grandmother had a farm, and he would go to this farm with his cousins, and he would just feel safe. Mm. He would feel alive. He would feel right. that's all he wanted to do was just be on the farm. He. He didn't want to go to school. He just thought about going to the farm. He would. They would shoot bow and arrows and hunt and fish hmm. and play and and he just loved it. And every you know his life was searching for that farm, that home, and that was so much a connection with the Exodus story. And right. I, and as I remember, we were driving, and I told him about that. I said, you know, your life is very much like that. And this hmm. this cabin that you're building, it's it's this search for this farm. It's wanting to go back to that to find that. He's driving. He goes, Rick. That's exactly right. You're, wow. you're exact. So it was neat. It was almost like a lot of what I do, and I, I sometimes when I talk with different people who will interview me about filmmaking and interviewing the art mm-hmm. of the interview, a lot of it really can be um, counseling <laughs> in a lot of ways, helping people discover something about themselves. And I've found if you can, when you're filming, you get somebody on camera and they discover something about themselves, and you mm, see it happen. Right. Uh, there were some moments with Shonda where that, where yes. she's discovering something about Absolutely. herself, and it's so powerful. That's why I don't like to practice or give them a list of questions or come in with you know yeah. a list of questions. I just have a conversation. Have a conversation. Sure. But you know, to see him discover this about himself, and as we're doing the interviews, he's he's kind of connecting these pieces. It was really powerful. It was really neat. So it was a great. I'm thankful and grateful that uh, I got the opportunity to do that and to help him. And it's uh, you can go to PatternsOfEvidence.com and uh, find out more. It's an online uh, release only. So there's tickets that you buy online and you own. It's to own the DVD. Uh, it's like you can download it and you get a link that's good forever and ever. Okay. And, um, you know, with the, with the pandemic and everything, theaters just aren't what they were. Right. And it's hard – it's expensive to get it into theaters, and you know, uh, it's so much money you have to spend to market it. He's got a large mailing list of his own from Patterns of Evidence, right. so he's kind of marketing to his his people, 
and we we just decided to not do it in theaters just because of the the expense. It's just so right. expensive, and people right now still, uh, if it's not Top Gun, <laughs> they're going if it's Top Gun. But Christian movies like this, we still haven't seen people go to them yet. Right. Uh, and I know the Kendrick brothers are having a uh, their movie uh, is going to be coming out this month. Hmm. A fathom event for a week. Wow! Called Life Mark, and we'll see how that does. I mean, I hope it does. Gr- I hope it does well. Yeah, hopefully the timings for where hopefully, people will come back. Yeah, and, we, we yeah. were hoping a year ago uh, in September of last year we did Show Me the Father, and they weren't ready to come back, and that was a disappointment. So now it's a year later in September again. Um, I think it's the seventh. Uh, they're going to have their theirs available called Life Mark in theaters. And so uh, I hope that does well for them. I hope they're ready to come back. But so far, we really haven't seen a Christian movie do well yet. Right. Maybe we should office. have Top Gun Jesus. <laughs> See how that does. <laughs> the Jesus version. Yeah. yeah. Top Gun gets saved. Ooh, I like that. There you go. I Tom like Cruise leaves Scientology and comes to Jesus. <laughs> oh, man, I'd go see that movie in a heartbeat. <laughs> Absolutely. So you said PatternsofEvidence.com is where they can find your film that you just made. Yeah, this, the, this journey documentary. the Journey Home. The Journey Home. But they can also see these other, find these other uh, right. Patterns of Evidence movies. In fact, that might be interesting to, for somebody to see the Exodus movie yeah. in conjunction before yes. or after watching yours because it'll, it'll, make, it'll bring those, those pieces together a little bit. And then for uh, personal therapy, for $200 an hour, you can contact Rick Altizer. <laughs> That's a and, joke. That's a joke. And he will, he will put a, a movie together of your life, but it'll cost you. So uh, <laughs> just want you to know he is available for, for counseling. Some of this goes to a public radio, so yeah. we've got to be real careful. But that, that was a uh, joke. A $200 donation. We're kidding. We're kidding. We're kidding. <laughs> Everybody, see, you're going to get calls going, man, if he could do that for that guy, he could do this for me and that's so right it's Come gonna be on. a whole new interesting thing it's like yes. no no we got to film this trust me filmmaking <laughs> therapy filmmaking therapy you've already got the song oh man yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> gonna happen well, well tell us a little bit about some of the challenges of pe- putting these pieces together how did you find the glue because that's your ch- uh, the, the documentary filmmaker you got to find a through line and then you've got to find a way to artistically Hold this together. So, what elements when people check this out will they will they see? Can they appreciate about the challenge of making a movie like? Yeah, this? and um, you know that was the challenge was was can I find a story here? Yeah. Right. Um, uh, we've seen those documentaries on the making of behind the scenes of this movie and that movie, and you just kind of retell the movie, and it's basically an advertisement for the movie. Right. And I think that's kind of what Tim was wanting, you know, and uh, I, I appreciate that, but I just didn't want to do an advertisement, you know, just because, I don't know, I'm just, I just don't know. I, well, I, and to make it more appealing to people, even if you haven't seen the movie, it, uh, you, it still, still should be interesting if you can right, find I the wanted, right angle. I wanted to make something you'd, you'd want to see, you'd watch it and you'd go, oh, you need to see this. This isn't right. what you think it is. This is really good. You need to go watch it. So right. that's what I wanted to, was, that was my hope and my goal. And my aim, and you know, we're hearing from the people who have seen it. That's that's happening. They're saying, "I'm, I'm, I need so and so to see this. I need my so and so needs to see this. Um, This is really something my dad, my brother, my uncle, my cousin, my neighbor needs to see." Right. So that's what I wanted to make was something that someone needed to see. I mean, I don't want to just make here's a here's a piece where you where you you know I'm I'm promoting something to try to sell somebody's DVDs. I wanted to make something that had more value and purpose in it just because you're going to spend six months of your life doing something. Yeah. You know, I want to I want to make a difference. And so that's my heart. That's where I went into it. So trying to find that story, I was so thankful and grateful when I went up and interviewed him. It's immediately, you know, there it was. Mm-hmm. The story was just right there. He starts telling you, know, my dad, you know, wanted threatened to kill me, you know, and kill us mm. and all the stories of his dad and how violent he was and, yeah. and uh, you know, what kind of trauma that would put in, in a child's life. Right. And then how do you come to the Lord? How do you find Jesus? How do you look at God now after having this terrible, you know, and, and then his right. mom, who's a strong Christian. So all these elements came together. So this was real, a, a challenge for me because this is the first movie that I've edited all by myself. Mm. I uh, co-edited Show Me the Father with the producer, Mark Miller. We, we kind of halved it and did, you know, I did half right. and he did the other half. But um, I've never really 
edited an entire movie myself. I've done the audio mix and I've done the music. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, I did the color correction, which I've never done before. Wow. So this was a real learning experience for me. So I was thankful for that, to get the opportunity to do some things I've never done before. Right. And there were some challenges with that. You know, kind of some... But I've been doing... You know, this is my sixth documentary, so I'm kind of getting to where... uh, because the first one was just sheer terror. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first Shonda movie. Yes. Was sheer terror. I didn't know what I was doing. And we want you to make a movie. It's like, ah, okay, sure, I can do that. Gulp. Yeah. And, uh, so now by, you know, I, f- I feel like I have a good sense of what story is and how to tell a story and how to let story drive the train. And so I wanted the music to be part of the story. Yes. I wanted, uh, you know, he has this farm and he loves to play music. He plays guitar and dobro mm. and pedal steel. And, and so I have him playing music in the movie mm. and we have these segments where he just is just playing and the music all kind of sounds like farm and it's got some banjo yeah. and dobro and acoustic. Right. And everything's acoustic, you know, and, um, if there's a piano, it's an acoustic piano. And, and so I, I kind of have the music kind of be part of his personality. So to try to, Tell that whole story with all the elements. Yeah, uh, is 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 such a key key thing. You have to let the story drive, and so um, different people have different thoughts of what the story is. And so I might have an idea of what I think it is, and, and Tim might have another idea of what he wants, <laughs> it, he wants to be. But he ended up being very happy with it, very 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 excited about it, right. and. Um, so it was it was a, an honor to do it, but you know there were some challenges in in just figuring it out. Like with anything, it's yeah. this big elephant, and you know how do you eat the elephant? You know one bite at a time. Right. That's the only way you eat an elephant. Yeah. You know, you just, well, and so many hats. Like you said, that, that's a, it's definitely I, I can see the challenge of that because of the little bit of experience I've had making videos or being a part of projects, just being in a studio, just the audio side of things alone you can get amazingly detailed about how to pull all that off. And so when you're responsible for every little nuance, you know, you've got to record him playing his music. Then you've got to blend that out with either write, you know, creating original music or finding music to cover over segments and things. And so how do those blend? And each, I mean, that's a soundtrack now that we're and talking. And you got to mix it. you got to do the audio mix. you got to right. do, co- i got to put compression on his vocal. I've got an interview that's sitting outside and we got airplanes flying around and we got birds <laughs> chirping. And, you know, how do I, you know, I've got to understand all the, the plugins that, that you can use that do all this audio processing yeah. that takes out the airplane, that takes out the bird chirps and keeps, her voice, you know, the, yes. all that kind of stuff where you have to take each audio file and fix it and tweak it and then no. mix it and put in the sound effects. That's just the mix. Exactly. Just that's one element, but it's got to be seamless for what an hour and a half or whatever. Right. You know, it's like, oh, my gosh, that's that's somebody's job. Well, they, right there. They team, yeah, there's a team of people who do that. Yes. <laughs> and then in editing, you usually have sometimes more than one editor. Right. And then, uh, you know, and then color correction. That's another thing. So I'm kind of wearing all those hats. Yeah. And, and, uh, and just going back to the editing for a second, I mean, I, I've just done, you know, a little, a little comedy video or whatever. And I know what a difference just a split second can make of impact. You know, if I stay too long on a shot and don't cut to the second one or, or vice versa, or it's got to zoom in, or it's got, I mean, a little bit can multiply the emotional impact yeah. or steal it. Mm-hmm. And when you're doing that over an hour and a half, I, oh my oh, gosh. It's, yeah, it, to it's try a, to keep it interesting. It's hundreds and hundreds of little decisions of oh, when yeah. to cut <laughs> and how to frame it and all that. So the audio, the editing, as you're trying to tell a story, you have to step back. Am I really telling the story? Because after a while, you're just you can stare at all those little edits and lose track of what am I doing here? Am mm-hmm. I making this better or worse? Honey, can you look at this? I have no idea anymore if I'm making progress. Well, yeah, I mean, I have to go with. I just have like a uh, a little butterfly feel in my gut, and when it feels right, I can just I can just feel it. Yeah, you know. So I just have to go off that. Yeah, you know. Does it feel right to me? And uh, when I get it, when it feels right and looks right and feels right and find the right shot to put the cover here and he's talking about this. So what's the emotion? What kind of shot do I want to cover him? Because, you know, we've got these 
they're having these uh, interviews and they're just talking. I'm interviewing them while they're talking to a camera. Well, I can't just have a whole movie of a talking head. I've right. got to have all this footage of him out in the field or out playing his guitar or walking with his wife or sitting yeah, at the, you know, whatever. Absolutely. Have break to have, that's called B-roll and yeah. have to cover that. So I want to make sure I'm covering the emotion and that yeah. the shot I'm using is conveying the emotion that he's having. And then sometimes when it's like, when they're really emotional, sometimes I don't want to leave them. I want to stay on them. Yeah. You know, and if, and if they're really uncomfortable and talking about something that's really difficult, sometimes the best thing to do is not leave. Stay yeah. on them. And sometimes, you know, you don't want to be on them because it's just, it's boring. Yeah. So all of those decisions, uh, all of that's the editing. And that's just, oh my goodness. You yeah. Know? Or combing through, like, I got to find an, an alternate shot here. Where is that? Oh, okay. It's here. Or I don't have something. Something has to happen here. I do not have it. I now need to find it, create it, do something, you know, to patch this, blend this thing and together. And he's got 20 years of footage. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, oh that they gave to me thousands oh my God of hours wow so talk about combing through footage oh, oh my. my yeah oh my and uh, so anyway you're listening to the Rick Altizer show um, on bot radio we're talking about uh, the new movie that I've directed it's called uh, patterns of evidence the journey home and you can uh, see the movie by going to patterns of evidence.com and uh, so anyway, yeah, that was just um, as with any movie, when you get started first, you have to kind of figure out what the story is, like who's going to come in where and what are they going to say? And right. You get all these interviews and how am I going to weave the interviews together so that it, it's making a narrative that makes sense. But then once I put the interviews together on the timeline in, in my computer right. software, now I got to cover it. And I got to make it feel right. And I got to. Yeah. So yeah, it, it is a uh, at the beginning, it's such an overwhelming thing that you yeah. you always, I mean, always you just you just feel, how am I going to do this? Oh my yeah. god, you know, and you just keep moving, keep going a day at a time, yeah, and keep you know knocking it knocking away at it, yeah, and then all of a sudden it starts. Well, it's just starting to feel kind of like a movie, you know. It's, yeah. it's it feels like a bad movie, but it's kind of you know, and then you yeah. keep working, keep working, yeah. keep. And all of a sudden you get to, hey, I think I think we got, you know, we got as good as I can do for what this is. You know, this is as good right. as I can make. Yeah. You know, you and you get to that and you go, great. Uh, you know, it, you're not going to make, nothing's ever perfect. You can't, you know, show me the father was, you know, there was right. things that I would probably, I would definitely change in show me the father. Um, you know, yeah. that's just how that is. So I've learned uh, to not stress on all that. Yeah. Realize, doesn't have to be perfect. Not perfect. But you know what? It's it's good, and uh, it, it the people who've seen it have, have have had strong reactions to it. So that that's great, and it's very different from what right. from what the patterns of evidence uh, kind of movies are, which they're more informational. Yeah, but this is relational. Yeah. So so we got just a little bit of time here, but you you poured six months of your life into this thing. That's a that's a lot on one project uh, with one client. And what's what's the takeaway that you would like people to, you know, we're going to leave a message here on this show right now. What's the heart of it, and what would you like to communicate to your audience? Uh, of the movie? Yeah. Well, I, th- I think uh, this is a, a story that's, that all of us can relate to. And uh, I wanted to tell a story that we could all relate to, which is our, our need for home. Hmm. Our need to know... Uh, what home is and that we have a home that for those of us who put our faith in Christ, there is a home that God has for us that we are working towards and living towards. And and we're on our journey to, right to that home. And, uh, so I, I'm just praying that this is a blessing to Tim and to people who see it, praying that it blesses them and helps them draws him closer to the Lord. And that, that was my, my heart and my goal is what I do this, is, Lord, I want to make a difference. Yeah. And I want you to have the glory. I want this to be a film about you that glorifies you and gives you glory and honor. So, um, you know, we'll see how, how that works. Yeah. <laughs> but, but people that are in your audience here listening to this, uh, if you have brokenness in your life, if you have trauma in mm-hmm. your life to overcome, this is a movie of hope. Yes. And it's one man's story as he 
found a way through. And so we want to encourage those of you out there, you know, there is hope. There's hope for the broken. And this, uh, this is a movie that might help you in that journey. Yeah, and it's relational, so that makes it good for men and women. It's a good date movie, so something to see with your family. Well, Paul, thanks for doing this, man. My pleasure. Always good to hang with you, buddy. Great for, for interviewing me on my show. Thank you. It's my pleasure, <laughs> and, and it's my show now. <laughs> Again, we're talking about uh, the movie Patterns of Evidence, The Journey Home, and you can see it by going to PatternsofEvidence.com. Paul, thanks so much, man. Appreciate my, your help, buddy. My pleasure. Uh-huh. If there's a show you've missed, you can go to my website, RickAltizer.com, and catch up. Or you can listen to my podcast in iTunes or wherever you hear your podcasts. Just search for The Rick Altizer Show. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. I want to thank you for listening. Hey, would you tell a friend about this show and share the love? Be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening.